So welcome back. Uh, today we're going to work on MASH, um, which is Maya's built-in motion graphics uh, system. And uh, so let's just jump right in. So today we're going to this this video we're going to focus on the audio node. But I'll take you through since this is the first one of the MASH network videos. I'll take you through, give you an idea of some of the other options that are there. So let's first start off with a simple object and we'll just create a polygon cube. And it doesn't necessarily matter how big it is. I'll make it roughly one, one by one by 1 1.5, roughly. It's not quite that, but something like that. Now, um, we don't have to do anything else to this. Um, you could put textures and things like that, but let's just stick with just the pure uh, raw polygon shape for now. Um, and let's go up and find our MASH tools. So they would be located in the main menu under the animation menu. So go up here in the upper left, click animation, and you'll find MASH. So I'm going to select the object first, then I'm going to go to MASH, and I'm going to say create a MASH network. Now before we do this, let me just explain um, when you create a MASH network, it adds in the MASH information and the tools available into your attribute editor. So um, when, once we create the MASH network, you'll be able to go into the attribute editor and then adjust the things and add nodes and things like that. So let's do that first. We'll so go create MASH network and hit the option box here. And um, we're basically going to leave everything as a default setting, but just wanted to show, show you where all this was, uh, what all was in here. So um, network name, I'm just going to leave it at MASH distribution type. What, what happens is as soon as you create a MASH network, it's going to distribute this object um, into multiple pieces. I think the default setting is uh, maybe 10. And you can choose whether you want them to be in, in a line, in a circle, a grid, or so on. And um, the red square indicates basically the original object. So we'll just keep it with the linear setup and hit apply and close. And you can see it takes that object, it puts it at the zero axis, which is what I had set, and it distributes it 10 times across here. Now, let's go ahead and open up. I'm going to select the main one here and hit Control A to bring up the attribute editor. And in the attribute editor, you'll see a lot of different tabs across the top that say MASH. In this case, MASH1 is the first one that we've applied. So let's scroll over here. Um, let's click the little arrow to the right to go through and find MASH1 Distribute. So this tab uh, gives you uh, control over how the object is distributed through the scene. So here you can see it's default at 10 points. I can increase that and you can see how it increases the number of objects. Um, I'll go 20. And that looks pretty good actually. Um, the distance in the X direction right now is set to 20 so it's, it's a, one, a one unit cube um, and you have 20 of them over 20 distance. They're going to be right up against each other. If you want a little bit of space just go ahead and increase the distance like that. So I'm going to go out maybe, let's go with an even number, let's go 40, and I'm going to go with 35 number points. Now you can also increase the distance uh, on the Y and Z, and it's not going to change, it's not going to turn into a grid, what it'll do is just kind of angle it. So if you see, it goes up at an angle that way, and so on, rotate, twist them in a number of different ways. And all these things can also be um, keyed too, so set keys if you want to animate those things happening. Um, random seed for the strength. We don't have anything going on with it yet, so let's leave it at 1. Um, also, under distribution type, we chose linear when we set it up, but we can always change that. We can go to radial, um, and you can see you know, all kinds of different things that you can do here. Uh, spherical, it's actually kind of assuming there's a sphere inside there. It kind of goes around the outside of it. 
uh, we don't have to do the mesh. We, that would be, if you had a mesh, let's say you had an object that was shaped like a car, you could select that and the objects would stick to the outside of the car. So you'd get kind of a, a car shape. Um, let's see what else we've got. Grid. <clears throat> and you can tell it you know, how many grid spaces you want and increase the number of pieces all the way across the grid as well in all three directions. <laughs> so I'm going to go back to, let's go back to linear for now. Now that's the distribute the distribute tab. Let's go to the left of that where it says mash one. This would be your network that you just created for that particular object. So here we have different nodes. You'll see audio, curve, color, delay, all kinds of different options that you can attach to these objects to work with them in a number of different ways. So for this video we're going to focus on the audio node right here. So go ahead and click on audio and you'll get a little message that says add an audio add audio nodes. Click on that. That adds a new tab up here in your attribute editor for the audio. So we can go in here and um, select the first thing you want to do is actually put some audio in here. Now it'll only take um, a WAV file, .wav file, so an MP3 won't work. Um, if you want to use the WAV file that I included in the video, um, go ahead and download that. I think it's called Music Sample 2. Um, or grab a file with some music or sounds or something in it uh, that you want to work with. But um, you can either click the file, file button here and browse for your audio clip. And, and I will do that right now. And there's mine music sample 02. So hit open. And immediately you see that your shape here has changed. And what it's doing is it's reading that music and it's adjusting different shapes along that line according to the music. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm actually going to plug that same audio file into the timeline down here. So I'm going to increase my timeline to about 2,000 frames. So that way it can play more of the music along there. And I'm just opening, what I'm doing is I'm opening up my f my uh, uh, my file folder and I'm going to drag that WAV file and drop it onto the timeline. So let's take it like this, drag it down here and let go of it and you should see the WAV file show up down here. So let's just see right off the bat what this looks like. So I'm going to hit the play button. Make sure um, also um, I'm going to change mine to 30 frames per second. Um, I'm going to readjust some of these numbers here. Oh, uh, 25,000. Not sure how that happened. And you can see as we scrub the timeline, it's making things happen. Now, one last thing you want to do is go into your animation preferences over here in the far right, a little red. Uh, person with the gear next to it and make sure your playback speed here is set to 30 frames per second times one. If you have play every frame it's not going to play right so 30 frames per second times one hit save. Now if we go ahead and play this on the timeline you'll be able to see the audio affecting the objects as well as hear the audio. So these objects here are moving because of the audio that's attached to the audio node, not what's in the timeline. The timeline audio is just there so we can hear it and see it at the same time. Okay, so I'm going to turn that off for a second. I'll try not to talk over uh, the music there. And let's take a look at our settings for this. So we've got the audio in and it's working. So I'm going to go back, select the object and bring up the attribute editor. And let's move into the mash 
audio tab over here. And I'm going to zoom out so you can kind of see the whole thing. And um, let's go ahead and adjust some of these. So we've got here um, so a lot of different options and how we can make this uh, work. Okay, so if we bring this up, bring over my attribute editor again. Um, we can see a lot of different things here. Notice as I scroll over, you can see how, like position X, it starts to move things, squishes them over to that side. Um, the Y, up, down, in, out, um, rotation, you can see it twists. And you can enter more numbers in here. You don't have to just use the sliders. But you kind of see how things are starting to rotate. And all these things can be animated too to make them more interesting. Um, also, uh, if you go down here uh, to threshold, if you increase the lower threshold, that means it's only going to start moving things at a certain level. So you minimize how many things actually move by increasing the lower or decreasing the upper. Um, you can you can limit to how high it'll go. You can see it kind of creates a plateau at a certain height. I'm going to go ahead and leave it at 100. Strength, um, you can increase or decrease the strength of the movement depending on what you're going for. Um, and you can go higher than 1. You could go 10 and make it really strong if you want to see uh, play that real quick, see what that looks like. And you can play with this while it's moving. So this is the nice thing about all of this, is it's very um, dynamic. It allows you to make changes and view it in real time as it's working. And of course, again, you can keyframe all this to animate it. If you want some things to be really big, and so on. So I'm going to leave the strength at about 2. Random strength. Incre decrease that. That can only go between 0 and 1. Um, strength map. If you use a black and white map, you can tell it where you want the strength to be and where you don't want it. You can use grayscale. Uh, projection. Let's change. Oh, we don't have a map, so I'm not going to do that. Alright, so those are some of the settings, it's just in the audio node alone. Um, let's go back to, click over here, go to the Distribute tab, and let's change some of these up. So let's go to Distribute Type and change that to Radial. And let's keep playing just to see what it looks like. And of course, all of these different sliders do a variety of different things. The Z offset, if you want to make it more of a spiral. Um, change the radial axis. Increase the points. Let's go down here and randomize it a little bit more. Alright, so there you see um, how the audio node is utilized just in um, in in just this one section. You know, now we can load up, as you'll see here later on in some of the future videos, you'll see you can load up these audio nodes. You don't have to just use one. You could have five or six on one specific object. So um, the next uh, group will be um, uh, another group of how to apply the objects into and distribute them along a mesh, a um, another object, so like a sphere or something like that. And then from there we'll load up some additional 
um, nodes to see what all we can do and how creative we can get with it. Um, as far as uh, finishing this, if you wanted to, you're basically just rendering it out. You could render it out as a play blast or you could render it out as, um, as a sequence file. It's up to you. Um, but that's the, the beginning. So this is how the MASH network be, uh, starts, how it works, and um, this was the, the audio node.